fresh is the word. I'm Jim Duggan, got long wood for plenty hoes. I keep it fresher than fresh, but you already know. You suckers bum me, I'm money, I got a ton of flows. My weed loud like a motherfucking thunder roll. Your shit quiet like you ballin' on a budget though. We see your kicks and we laugh and yell the of those. You see me shining like a suit on puffy. You know my grind and shit is too strong, buddy. That's why the dude call money. I be stuntin' like it's nothing at all. Cause it's nothing to me, it's probably something to y'all. Trying to smoke like me, then come and fuck with your dog. Got a closet full of kids, you can't cop it tomorrow. And I'm fresher than the freshest, you can tell it's in my essence. Bitch, you see the way I'm rapping? Yes, I do this shit to death. But tell I'm running out of breath. But tell somebody cut a check. But either way, you know it's fresh. But either way, you know it's fresh. Fresh. We fresh. 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 Fresh, God damn it, we fresh. Welcome to the Fresh of the Word podcast, podcast about music, pro wrestling, and MMA. I'm your host, Kay Fresh. And like always, really cool show. Got a lot of love from last week's uh, episode with Twisted. So we're just going to keep the ball rolling. I got a cool guest for this week. Uh, his name is Jamie Morgan. He's from the metalcore band Code Orange. They hail from Pittsburgh. And they have a new album that's out now called Forever on uh, Roadrunner Records. And he's a big pro wrestling and MMA fan. So that's why I had him on the show, man. We talked a little bit about the band, the new album. Then we got into, you know, the nuts and bolts about uh, pro wrestling and MMA. We talked about a lot of things. We talked about New Japan. We talked about WWE. We talked about the UFC. It was fantastic. And then after the interview with Jamie Morgan, like always, I'll be joined with my co-host, V Styles, to talk about what's been going on in the world of MMA and pro wrestling. But before we get to the interview with uh, Jamie Morgan, uh, I would like to just remind you how you could support the podcast. Uh, if you go to freshesthepodcast.com, uh, you can just please just support by, uh, by sharing any of the links from the website. Uh, you can click on the link on the website that says support the podcast, and there's a PayPal link you can donate to. Or if you buy anything on Amazon, there's a link on that page that you can use. It doesn't uh, change anything on your end. They just uh, shoot back some commission for any purchases that you use using that link. Um, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Fresh is the, Fresh is the Word 1. That's Fresh is the Word, the number one. And then on Facebook, you can go to Facebook.com slash Fresh is the Podcast and give us a like. And again, share any links that are on there. And we're also, uh, you can also sub- subscribe to Fresh is the Word on Stitcher and iTunes. Uh, just search Fresh is the Word and it should come up. And, uh, you know, if you want, you know, give us a five-star rating if you like the, like the show. They'll help out, you know, spread the word, you know. It will uh, definitely help me out, help out the podcast. There's a lot of great things that I have in the works. And I also want to give another shout-out to some, some good friends of mine. Uh, from the Undeniable Press Screen Printing. Uh, they're a screen printing business uh, located in the Corktown di- um, district of Detroit. And if you need any sc- screen printing needs, T-shirts, posters, uh, vinyl covers, I guess, towels, you know, hit them up and uh, they can uh, hook you up with some really great screen printing. Um, if you uh, want to find out how to, uh, any more information, just go to facebook.com slash undeniable.press, and uh, you can contact them from there. And also, those same, uh, same guys who run Undeniable Press also have a great pro wrestling-themed clothing line called 20 by 20 Apparel. So go to their website, which is 20x20apparel.com. That's the number 20x, the number 20 again apparel.com and they have a great line of wrestling themed t-shirts uh so let's get on with the interview with uh, jamie morgan from the band code orange all right we have uh jamie morgan from the band code orange here last week your uh, publicist uh emailed me because you guys are going to be doing uh, a show here in detroit on the 17th of january at the l club and literally on that same yeah. day i um I saw that you did it, uh, a podcast, uh, the Metal Injection Squared Circle Pit, and we're talking about you know yeah. wrestling and MMA, and I was like, dude, I gotta talk to this guy, and we're gonna be coming to town. So it was Hell like, yeah. I was like, 
definitely want to talk to this guy. I think um, I first came across you guys at Mayhem 2015. Um, cool. I yeah, that, I, was, that was a cool tour. Yeah, I think I saw you guys. Uh, I, I caught part of your set there, and it sounded great. Um, I just got a, uh advanced listen to the new album, and it sounds fantastic, you know? So um, uh, before we talk about any Thank wrestling you, uh, and MMA stuff, I definitely want to talk about the uh, the new album. Um, you got a new Code Orange album, uh, Forever, is coming out this week on the 13th of January. Um, when I listen to it, you know, like always, you guys kind of don't stick to just one thing. You guys, guys kind of like dabble into a lot of different textures, a lot of different little sounds throughout the album. What was sort of the, the mood of the band going into writing and recording this album about figuring out what you wanted to do? I think it's just a mood we kind of approach everything, which is we're just really hungry to do something different and challenge ourselves and challenge people listening in like our own way and provide a, you know, a new take on this kind of music. And that's what we wanted to do. We just wanted to make the best record we could possibly make. And we worked extremely hard day in, day out on every single part to, you know, make sure it was the best of what we do. And we introduced a lot of new elements and new shades to what we do. So I think that's always our goal. And I think we're just getting better at it. How do you feel like you've uh, progressed from the previous album? I think uh, the last record we did uh, was kind of like setting the table for what we're going to do now. And we had done a bunch of records when we were teenagers and young kids. And then we did the last record and, uh, kind of reestablish what we're about and this record we got a lot more creative and experimental but all through the lens of uh a 35 minute punch straight in the mouth you know so (laughs) i think uh that we wanted to make a record that was a big scoped record but through the eyes of hardcore through the eyes of the music that we love and the brevity of that uh but at the same time Maybe it's tough to hit on a hardcore metal record with different dynamics and right. use different uh, tools. So, you guys originally formed the band in 2008. Uh, you guys were teenagers during that time. You know, looking back to those early years, you know, what's some of your fondest memories of that time? Um, I think some of our fondest memories of that time is is you know touring and just getting better. And there's a lot of struggle involved in all that, but um, I think those will always be fond memories, but it's hard to have memories when we just, we've just been doing it, you know, and we keep doing it, but we're all 23 now. When we started, we were 14. So <laughs> I think we've just had the opportunity to experience a lot of stuff. People don't start experiencing until now. And we're already veterans in this game. So I think, uh, we're the youngest veterans ever. <laughs> so I think we're ready to, to go and, uh, you know, we have a lot of knowledge about how all this stuff works, and now hopefully we're going to go get it out there to some more people. Right. What's, you know, now that you've kind of tr- tr- um, transitioned from being teenagers to being adults, you know, what do you think the biggest uh, life lessons you've learned about being with being in this band? I think we've learned just that we need to, and this record is about this in a lot of ways, but just we've learned to trust ourselves and trust our close circle of people we've grown up with and kind of cancel out a lot of the other noise. And I think we do have a really strong vision for something that is different than, uh, other things out there and uh, a strong vision for the best thing we can be. And I think it's just, uh, we've learned a lot of lessons about trust and a lot of lessons about, you know, and and we've learned that it just, it takes hard work and, it's a steady uphill for us. And as long as there's exciting new challenges and new goals, I think we'll always be interested, but I think we're vampires for that shit and we (laughs) need those goals and we're hungry for hungry for that, you know? And I don't know, I don't know how other bands operate, but we need that. And we're just going to keep, keep fighting for that. You know, have you been uh, playing much of the new, uh, the songs from the new album, uh, out to your uh, recent shows recently? Uh, our next show is on next Friday. It's our re- in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's our record release show for forever. Yeah. We haven't really played a show since August. Okay. We've just been working on this stuff. So we played one song at that show. 
uh, but we have a whole new setup now. So um, we have a new guy playing with us, and it's going to be kind of a new experience. For this tour, we even created an album's worth of kind of strange music ranging, everything from industrial to soundtracky to just our guitar player, Shade. He has made his own, own album, and it's going to play in between all the bands on our tour. So we're kind of trying to introduce our own experience on kind of like a DIY level and just do something different and do something that represents us. Just like all our stuff. We want our visuals to represent us. We want our music to represent us. We want our show to represent us. And uh, that's what we're doing. Fantastic. You know, definitely good luck with all of that. Um, and Thanks, man. Yeah, and um, what I want to talk about now is like, yeah, we uh, when I've, I uh, heard that you're a big wrestling fan, so and I and I listened and I heard all the stuff that you kind of uh, are into. Uh, you're into a lot of stuff outside the WWE. So like the big question is, did you watch New Japan's Wrestle Kingdom? Yeah, I just got the chance to watch most of it. I thought it was awesome. Did you did you catch the Okada versus Omega match? Yeah, of course. It was it was phenomenal. It was awesome. Um, that was that was just a great show. I've been a lot more into. Uh, MMA in the past couple of years and like WWE and wrestling even, but I feel that those those big New Japan shows are always so so good, and that was probably the best one, maybe the best one ever. So it was awesome. Yeah, I def I I uh, actually stayed up all night. I was like half asleep on my couch, basically with one eye open. Nice. Well, I watched it live, and I'm like, dude, this is incredible. Like they, it was just the whole show was just fantastic you know and um yeah and everything was like even that last like run of four matches was so yeah unreal unreal like one of the best like four match runs that i've ever seen you know so it's like crazy um yeah you say you've been more into yeah, uh awesome. you've been in, more into mma recently yeah um do you just yeah, watch uh, probably, ufc like, or do, do you uh branch out to Bellator and the other organizations? Yeah, I've watched Bellator sometimes. I have, I've watched like World Series of Fighting before. I've watched like Cage Warriors in the UK. Um, I don't know like everyone, but um, right. I've watched a lot of that stuff. My friends here, I have a couple of friends here like really into it, so we've watched pretty much everything. Cool, cool. Did you, uh, did you catch uh, UFC 207? Yeah, yeah. We, we watched, we, we all went in Watch the whole thing. It was really fun. Right. Great show. Yeah, that um, that Dominic Cruz versus Cody Garbrandt fight was pretty pretty awesome. Yeah, that was unbelievable. We actually have like a kind of a little bit of a cool connection to that because uh, uh, there's this kid named Andre Feely who uh fights for Team Alpha Male and he's like very good friends with Cody Garbrandt and he's like a big fan of Code Orange and we met through that and he's a super awesome dude and just like a badass martial artist so. I'm always pulling for those guys. So um, I was really pulling for Cody to win. He's also from about like an hour from where I live in Pittsburgh. So I was, it was awesome to see, man. It was a freaking incredible fight. Yeah, and yeah, because definitely Dominic Cruz was the favorite because he, ha he hasn't lost since 2007. Uh, and yeah. no one knew, you know, could uh, Garbrandt like definitely like figure out Cruz, but. It was a phenomenal fight, and he was he and Cody looked so like relaxed in that fight, and it was just um, yeah, he looked awesome. It was incredible. He was dancing, scene. it was fun. Yeah, and the whole the whole like build up to it was pretty awesome too, with all them t um, talking trash to each other each week, and um, but then but th I think that's why MMA is pulled so ahead of wrestling because even though the stories are oftentimes real, they just feel. They feel more real. There feels like consequence, and they, it makes sense because it's real. And right. I think that in the past couple of years, especially UFC in particular, has you know has a lot more interesting characters than any WWE show has. Right. And you know, alongside with the fact that I really love the sport, that's a really drawing factor to me. You know, so. Right, and I was uh, I was just discussing this with my uh, regular co-host on the podcast about because I was going back and watching the old like WCW Starcades on the WWE Network, and we were kind of uh, yeah. discussing how those parallel to sort of what's going on in uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling at this time, where it's 
it, yeah. There's story. There's simple storylines about competition, and you can tell those in the ring. Yeah, that. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that's not usually like a WWE thing. Nah. But I agree. <laughs> I love that. That's kind of, that's exactly why I love MMA. I mean, you know, Conor McGregor is a better character than anyone in anything ever. Right. You know, so it's like. There's no, it's, it's, there's just no comparison, really. No, he doesn't create something that good. Right. Connor definitely figured out like how to play the game and he has, he has everything to back it up, you know? So, and and he's a badass, you know what I mean? And, and there's a lot of badasses in, in the UFC and it's real and the consequences are very real, you know? Right. And yeah, the consequences are real. And at the same time, uh, there's always that you know, era of unpredictability. You never know what's really about to happen, you know? No, 100%. Yeah. Uh, anything can happen. And I mean, that's always been the case in MMA, but I, I just think they've had a couple stars that have risen up lately. And it, it, that, that hasn't happened on WWE, you know, even though they're different things, but there are no stars really on WWE. It's just like a bunch of people. And a lot of times there's a lot of people I really like, and liked at some point before they got there. And it's just like the same shit every single time. It's just the same shit over and over again. I just get tired of it. I understand that. Yeah. Um, I don't th- like the thing is, I don't think WWE is almost in the business anymore to making stars. Their last real star was John Cena that they actually built to where yeah. they can transcend. I mean, you got to give credit to him too. Like, John Cena's and Conor McGregor's don't just pop up all the time. No. They exist, and you're lucky to get them. You know what I mean? And, but it's just about if you know what to do with those people, like UFC has done and like they did then. You know, but sometimes people might – the boat might be getting missed. I think probably Kenny Omega is probably one of those people, so we'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, I think he has the potential to be that more than a lot of these other guys that have come – for different reasons, just because maybe their age or their size. And I think uh, if he comes to WWE, hopefully they'll fuck that up like they usually fuck it up. I think I think with Kenny Omega, this is what's going to happen. Um, like he says right now that he has no interest in coming to WWE and he wants to, uh, you know, build his own thing, which I think he should continue to do. And, almost, and do probably exactly the same thing, but not take as long as AJ Styles did, where... He got to a point where AJ Styles is uh, his his legacy is undeniable. His name is undeniable. So that when he can come to the uh, WWE, you can't really fuck up with what he's doing, and he can own his name and own his merchandise and own himself and his character. And the WWE can't. It's undeniable that the un, that they can really do a lot of things with it. So I think that's what Kenny Omega should do. He doesn't need to rush to uh, the WWE. He needs to just solidify his place in wrestling. And I think he's going to be one of the biggest wrestlers ever in Japan for, um, of all time. And I yeah. think there's going to be a point when he can't, if he wants to come to WWE, it has to be at that point when he has all the cards and he can control his own destiny over there. Kind of the same way that, that AJ Styles has. He finally came to WWE and has had a hell of a first year. Yeah, I mean, but he's old. You know what I'm saying? So yes. if they wait too long with these guys who are doing these crazy matches, right? then they are old. And right. Finn Bauer's old. I mean, they're not old people-wise, but they're old wrestling-wise. And Kenny Omega ain't old. So, I mean, I think that they've done a good job with all that, but it all gets watered down. And there's a bajillion hours a week. <laughs> right. It's just tough sometimes for me to get – for me to get excited about it. There's so many I mean, things, I, The man. AJ stuff's good, but it's, it's just, like, boring sometimes. There's so many shows. Right. It's I, just, like, too much. You know, you know what I'm saying? There is. And, but I'm, I'm glad that we're in this time right now with how the independent uh, organizations and the stuff outside of WWE to where guys like Kenny Omega or the Young Bucks or an Adam Cole can make a living – uh, and not come to WWE. Yeah, we'll see how long that lasts because they're just they're picking that off too, <laughs> and everyone's all excited about it. But they're picking it off, you know. They're picking off all those those people one by one, so nobody's left. Right. And we'll see. I mean, it's it seems cool now, like oh, I want, but 
I don't really, you know, it's probably better that they stay where they stay. And I think, and I think, uh, guys are getting smarter than what it was in the past. And this is something that's actually kind of transitioning more in, uh, MMA also, especially since, uh, that big, uh, the big sale of, uh, UFC for four point whatever billion. Yeah. That everybody's starting to, yeah. starting to realize their value and realize that, um, there's only a finite window of when they can uh, make some real money, you know? And I think that's, that's yeah, transition definitely. in wrestling and in MMA to where, and a lot, a lot, you know, you see a lot of guys still doing the big spots and big, you know, flips and through tables and stuff. But at the same time, there's still a, a almost like a work smarter as, aspect to a lot of guys also to where, um, when they're on these independents or in Japan, that they sort of work smarter now, just so they can sort of mac- maximize their buck. Yeah, I couldn't hear the very end of what you just said. I'm sorry, I was cutting in and out. Oh, but fine. I think generally what yeah. you were saying, I agree with you totally. Yeah. But what what'd you say at the end there? I'm sorry. I was just saying that you know they're just uh, maximizing their buck. Yeah, no, I think they definitely are. I mean, then you see kind of. UFC going in a direction that maybe people don't really like and where, you know, it's less competitive base and more driven with these big fights and stuff. And I don't know, you, you know, you just got to see how all this stuff plays out. Who knows if it's good or bad when it comes to <laughs> both things. And sometimes they do know, they do know uh, what they're talking about. So, uh, you know, you just got to, I always like to stay in the know just because I'm a bit of a nerd about it, but right. <laughs> you got to see what happens. Just, is there, is there anybody in the world of MMA right now that you're a big fan of that you're excited to see what you know what's next with them? I mean, I love Cody. He's awesome. I love my friend Feely. He's fucking badass. He's probably my favorite to watch because he's my friend and he's kicking ass. I love Connor. You know, I love Wonder Boy and um. Ever, I mean, there's so many guys. Damian Maya's awesome. Uh, on the come up, I'm trying to think. Um. There's, a, there's just so many great guys. Here, Rodriguez fights this weekend against VJ Penn. He's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, uh, there's uh, there's so many good guys right now. The Diaz brothers are some of my favorites. So. Yeah. It's always fun. How do you uh, how do you think that uh, um, the match with uh, VJ Penn's gonna um, go? You know, how, how do you think that's gonna go? He's probably gonna get fucked up. It's always gonna go. <laughs> VJ Penn. It seems like it. I mean, the kid's crazy, so we'll see. I mean, BJ Penn's pretty old, so he's probably gonna get fucked up. Yeah, there, there was like, uh, there was some stats that I read today that the last time BJ Penn fought, uh, Ronda Rousey was two and zero, and Conor McGregor was four and one. Yeah, that 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 makes sense. He's very <laughs> old, but he's a badass too. I mean, yeah, he's fuck, He's had some badass fights as well in the past. Him and Diaz, and he's had a lot of great fights. Do you um do you ever get a chance to um, um when it comes to wrestling, uh, check out any of like the indie organizations outside of New Japan or or WWE, uh, any of the smaller organizations? Yeah, yeah. I go to I go to I go to I've gone to like pretty much all. I mean, I go to a lot of them. Uh, I there's one up here called IWC that we go to a lot that my friend. Wyatt, his name is uh, Remy LeVay. He wrestles for and I love him. And uh, there's a lot of good guys there. And uh, Evolve. And the, yeah. there, I went to a really good Evolve show the weekend of SummerSlam in New York. And okay. they had uh, Matt Riddle versus Tom, Tommy End. And that was one of my favorite matches of the year. It was really good. Oh, yeah. Those guys are great. Um, those guys are both awesome. Yeah, they're awesome, man. They're badass. Yeah, so, yeah, Tom, yeah Tommy End's in uh, NXT now. He just changed his name to Alistair Black. Yeah, I seen that. That's cool. Good for him. Good for him. Yeah, he's a, yeah he's a badass. Um, is there any other organizations oh, that, yeah. you, um, that you've been to, like in the Midwest or anything? Um, I can't think of any off the top of my head. I'm sure I have been to something. We don't really go on tour very much. <laughs> right. But I've gone like during those like SummerSlam uh, weekend stuff and WrestleMania weekend and around here in the area around here. So I've been to some stuff for sure. Yeah, there's a 
like in the Midwest here, there's like some cool, like in Cleveland, there's uh, AIW. Um, that, yeah, AIW. Yeah, I've seen that before. Yeah, that was like uh, Johnny Gargano's uh, home, pretty much. Uh, that's where he kind of uh, yeah. was um, home. Like him and uh, Candice LeRae used to like uh, teach the school there, and uh, they're um, that was like their home base. And then in um, Chicago, there's AAW, which is always fantastic. Uh, it's almost they always kind of like bring together a lot of like the best indie talent. Like you'll see like Sam Callahan there or Pentagon Junior. Um, there's a whole list of people that uh, they always bring in. And um, that that's badass. Yeah, AEW reminds me of like the they're almost like the PWG of the Midwest. You know, that's the best way I would describe them. That's awesome. I really want to go to PWG, but I've never got the chance to go. I have a lot of fr- couple friends who get to go pretty regularly. So right, right. I'd love I mean, to go. Sometimes. Yeah, I definitely want to go too. Uh, but it's it's like so hard to always like get out there for and get tickets. You know. Yeah, it's tough, man. And then there's like a dope uh, organization tough. in um, Dayton, Ohio, uh, called Rockstar Pro. Um, they have like a whole. Yeah, uh, I've heard of that too. Yeah, they have a dope crew of people there. Uh, uh, Jake and Dave Christ. Uh, uh, Sammy Callahan, which he used to be Solomon Crow in NXT. Um, yeah, yeah, I've seen Sammy Callahan. I saw him a couple of weeks ago at IWC show. Yeah, dope. Yeah, yeah. Those those are all great, like great indie uh, organizations. Uh, um, they always put on amazing yeah, they're shows. Awesome. And then um, did you? Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, no. Sorry, I just got cut off. Oh, okay. All right. Um, but yeah, also, um, I'm going out to LA later on this, uh, this month, uh, around my birthday and, uh, I'm actually going to see Glory Kickboxing one night and then Bellator, uh, the next night. Is that the chill, the chill show? Yeah. The chill Sunday and uh, Tito Ortiz. Yeah. 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 I'm excited. That should be a good one. Chill and Tito. Yeah, that should, yeah, should be... old motherfuckers. <laughs> right. Chell's Ch- son is... Going uh, at his, uh, his trash talking is uh, always amazing. Yeah, I like that podcast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I like listening to his podcast, too. He's, he's had some crazy stories from people on there. Yeah, it's, it's a great cast. Cool. Um, is there... Um, when it comes to like more of like uh, in, in just in the realms of, of, of pro wrestling, who are some of your favorites and, and some of the people that you're uh, you know looking to see good things from um, coming up? Well, um, my current favorites are obviously like Kenny Omega a lot. I really love the Young Bucks. I love uh, Ricochet and Osprey, and yeah. I love John Cena, and I love AJ Styles. And I like Nakamura a lot, obviously. And yeah. there's a lot. I mean, there's a million great guys. There's no lack of great guys. It's just some boring shit sometimes in WWE. But I think uh, the matches are great. And uh, yeah, there's some. There's there's so many great guys right now. Yeah, Shinsuke Nakamura is like my is like my total favorite. Like, yeah, everybody loves him. Yeah. Did Did you watch uh, last year's Russell Kingdom when he went against AJ Styles? Yeah, it was awesome. Oh, that was an incredible match. Yeah, I've been um Hell yeah. I've been high on uh Nakamura for uh for a while now. And uh have you have you checked out any of the like the tag team matches uh this past year in NXT from uh uh Gargano and Ciampa versus the Revival? Yeah, I was I was there. I, I saw that at uh the takeover in Brooklyn. Oh, okay, all right, I'm cool. Pretty sure. Yeah, that was awesome. And I, I saw. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that match a couple times actually live. Yeah, I um, I was in Toronto for the Toronto takeover uh, when uh, uh, Champa and uh, Gargano won the belts. That's awesome. That was a really good match. Yeah, those were those are a couple of my favorite tag team matches for uh, um, that um from this year. They were like mind blowing. That that was like it was like such like old school wrestling storytelling you know like tag team wise like back when like like arn anderson and and ole anderson those guys you know back in the wcw days used to do like real tag teaming 
Yeah, dude, those, that match was probably the best match on that whole show, the, at the Brooklyn one. Yeah, that. oh, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. All right, man, it's been great talking with you about uh, album wrestling and MMA. Um, before we cut this uh, Thank interview, you, man. Uh, definitely, can you tell uh, everybody where they can uh, check out Code, Code Orange's uh, new album, music, everything online? Yeah, we uh, got a website, CodeOrangeTOTH.com. Uh, you can get it there, and uh, you can get it in stores everywhere uh, through Roadrunner Records. So definitely pick that shit up. And uh, thanks for talking uh, talking shit that I like. <laughs> awesome, man. Yeah, man, thanks for uh, taking the time to chat with me. And I'll definitely come say hi to you when you come to Detroit. Yeah, dude, definitely do. Hit me up ahead of time. Cool, definitely. All right, appreciate it, brother. All right, man, have a good day. All right, bye. So that was the interview with Jamie Morgan of the band Code Orange. Their new album, Forever, is out via Roadrunner Records now. So go pick it up. So now let's get to some pro wrestling and MMA discussion. And like always, I'm here with my co-host, pro wrestling and MMA connoisseur, Detroit hip-hop artist and proud Marine V-Styles. What's going on, people? What's going on, my man, DJK Fresh? You right? I'm good, man. I'm good, man. How you doing? You know, like I'm telling you before, man, a little winded, but shit, man, we have to do what we have to do. We have to supply the people with the product. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it is it is what it is, man, but we're going to keep it moving. Right. How's, how's everything coming on with the music, man, with the Thornton Mellon Project? Oh, man, Thornton Mellon is turning into something else, man. Um, I'm still being, you know... Uh, very careful, you know, on what I can really say about it and any of the information as far as who I'm collabing with, you know, stuff like that. I'm trying to keep that secretive a little bit. I mean, I've, I've, I've spoke, I've spoken, you know, on, on a few things, uh, on, on the, on the podcast uh, as far as what am I doing, but uh, I'm really having a blast. Really, like, just putting this whole thing together. I was in the lab last night working on, uh, you know, a song called Return of the Kraken, and it's actually Class of the Titans Part 2. And um, I'll give you a little bit. My man Knotts is producing that. Word. And uh, I got some heavy hitters on there. And that's pretty much, you know, all I will reveal about Return of the Kraken. But, you know, uh, I have some very well-respected craftsmen, you know, very well-respected word craftsmen on uh, on uh, Return of the Kraken. So I'm excited, man. I can't wait to finally you know have that first listening party and have that party where where vinyl is going to be the only thing you can buy um yeah man Thornton Mellon is going to be dope it's going to be dope you know I could talk it all day but <laughs> you know until you got uh, until you hear it you know uh, you know it's just going to be one of them things you know like what's going on with it but I promise you when you hear it you know you, you you know, the ultimate goal is to make timeless music. Right. And I, I, I think I've succeeded, you know, in, in this next release that I'm going to be putting out, man. It's definitely timeless, and you'll be able to hit it, you know, play it from the first day and, you know, and until you leave this earth. Because, like I said, it's going to be timeless, man. Time, Timeless and dope. Real R&B, rhymes and beats, you know. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it, it, it's gonna be super dope, man. I can't wait to present it to the to the world. That's great. Yeah, I know me and you have talked about this before. How like I've been like totally sort of, I don't know, sick of DJing and kind of burnt out on it and everything. So I'm, mm -hmm. I, and I'm kind of in my own little sort of semi hiatus from it. But um, sure. but what but what I think. I think the next step that I've actually taken in regards to all that is like uh, recently I purchased a uh, Native Instruments uh, machine micro, so um. Oh wow. Yeah, I'm gonna actually like learn to 
use that and just kind of like maybe flush out some ideas of my own uh, in regards to making some music. Uh, I think that's a nice, healthy next step to get away from uh, the boredom that I've had with DJing. And, um, Look, I'm telling you, we, we, all, we all make that transition into something else, man. But as long as you stand, you know, there's nothing wrong with, you know, like I get tired of rhyming, man. I, I, I produce. I, I, I make beats on, on, on MPC Renaissance and most MPC products um, or Kaya products. Um, there's nothing wrong with that, man. I, I think you might fall in love with that more so than DJ. Yeah, it's possible. And, and from the, you know, from the, the sort of playing around that I've done thus far with it, I think the this sort of product, the the machine, the machine micro, is like it kind of kind of go is more congruent to like my thought process with how mm-hmm. how it works, and then you see the visuals like on your on the laptop screen and everything. I think mm-hmm. the reason why I like this is that it kind of it, it kind of is more in tune to how I think about everything. So I'm kind of excited okay. to uh, sit down in in and learn it and kind of just even just flesh out some ideas. You know, I have some thing, I have some things that I would like types of music that I would like to do, you know? So, uh, mm-hmm. well, you know, we'll, you know, we'll see where that co- goes, you know, goes to. So if you're going to do it, I'm, I'm, I'm knowing you, I think you, you will exceed your expectations. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, mm-hmm. Turn it in, turn into the the MMA world. Uh, there's always stuff to talk about in MMA. Um, Indeed. We're uh, two weeks out from uh, the fallout from the Ronda Rousey fight, and people are still giving their uh, hot takes about it. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, and then uh, we're we're seeing some things. Uh, find you know. Upcoming events starting to solidify a little bit, but uh, one of the big news for you know today is the ongoing Conor McGregor Floyd Mayweather thing. Uh, Dan- oh my God! Dana White comes <laughs> out and said he's gonna he he's offering twenty five mil to each plus you know pay per view uh, for this to happen, and it's just like, come on, is this really gonna happen? I don't. Like I don't know, man. I know I know it's just sort of a publicity stunt to begin with, but it seems like they're just taking this too far. You know? I think again, and I, I hate I hate to get on the me about the you know dog and Dana White out, but here we go. For Dana to say he's gonna offer Floyd twenty five mil and offer Connor twenty five mil. He speaks about both of them as they're as, as, like they're both equal. Right. Um, Dana is, you know, some delusional shit right now. First off, um, Floyd gets hundred million dollar checks. Right. So where where do you think you can lowball him by giving him twenty five million? Floyd is def- is definitely the A side. He's the A side in this. You got a guy that's forty nine and old that has never lost. You got a guy in kind of a Gregor that's two and one in his last three fights. Let's keep this shit honest, man. You know kind of got what, two, three losses? Like he is is he an exciting fighter? Is he a person that's known, is he, you know, is he, I'm not going to say he's running the show. He might be running the show in MMA world, but we're talking about boxing. So I don't understand how Dana could say some crazy shit like, well, I'll offer, here's Mike Conner offering $25 million for Floyd. That, that's some bullshit, especially from a dude that when he started off, he used to, you know, be one of, you know, that Floyd used to wear his patches in the ring. You know, Dana, Dana's out of his mind if he think he could just offer that man 25. Like, they're not even. There's no way in the world they're even. And for, you know, this was Dana's excuse uh, as far as McGregor is concerned. Oh, well, you know, nobody, you know, according to Floyd's last fight, da 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 Floyd has 
the biggest pay per view of all time with Manny Pacquiao, and he still have three other pay per views that are in the top five of all time. So you know, you talking about him and Oscar De La Hoya, him and Canelo. Um, Floyd has been doing this time and time again. So the the to say that because his last fight with, with Berto was lackluster than than Connor's the A side, it's, it's it's just fucking ridiculous. Like dude like who are you playing with? Who are you Connor here, man? I mean, you know twenty you know, twenty five million for him and twenty they're nowhere near equal. You know, like one the one thing that we will not hear if they were ever to fight is the announcer saying somebody's O got to go. Because <laughs> Connor, Connor don't have no O's. And if you think that he will stand a chance with just throwing his hand against Floyd, um, it would be worse than the Arturo Gatti, R.I.P. Arturo Gatti, but it would be worse than the Arturo Gatti beating. And I stand by the, the Arturo uh, true Gotti fight, man, is my example for anybody who think Connor will stand a chance, you know. And, and and Gotti would put it on Connor McGregor, man. He would he wouldn't dare have a chance against Floyd Mayweather, man. So, you know, they they talking shit just to keep their names in their mouth. <laughs> you know, Flo, I thought I thought I thought Floyd offering him fifteen millions and. and and money on the back end for the pay per view was great because Connor will be making some serious money. You're talking a guy. You're talking about a guy that has never made three. The biggest check that he's got from the UFC is three million dollars just to show up. Floyd gets a hundred million dollars to right. show up, right. and that's before the pay per view and, and and everything else kicks off. So I just think them guys is delusional, and like Floyd said, they're going to piggyback off of him. They just try to keep their name in the press. Because if you think a man that's 49 and old will lose to a guy who's having his very first professional boxing fight only throwing hands, I'll take that bet any day of the week. Any day of the week from any – I would love to bet Dane on that. You know, not MMA, but let's talk pugilism. Let's just talk about him throwing hands against this guy throwing hands. I, I, I would, I would own everything Dana has. <laughs> you know, he, if he believes Conor McGregor is getting the getting the ring with Floyd, it's like wow, dude. He, he, he can't even believe that shit, man. That, that's some, I, you know. I don't think Dana believes the shit that he he talks most of the time, man. Cause right, <laughs> there's, there's just there's just no fucking way in life. To, I bet I bet they was laughing, you know, when he when they heard about that twenty five million. Like get the fuck out of here, dude. You right. passed out to a dude that didn't even train for two weeks. Right, and the thing is, is like twenty five million plus pay per view points. It doesn't matter how popular that event would be in buy rates, it would still not be anywhere near near a hundred million. I don't I think I don't think people will buy it because they know what the fuck will happen. Now exactly. you will have you will have you will have people that you know that are will buy it just for the sake, but you know smart smart fans and smart people that really know boxing knows that Connor don't stand a fucking chance. So, you know, and that ain't just Connor. I like Connor, but not it's you know, you ain't you ain't getting in there, you know, with T V E or T M T, you know, um and, and and beating that man. Not on your best day, that's not gonna happen. Right. Right. It's uh, it's just a joke. And hopefully it doesn't happen, but we'll see. Um Coming up, uh, two th- um, UFC 209, they have, uh, it's official now, Khabib Nurmagomedov versus Tony Ferguson for the interim lightweight title. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm one, one of uh, probably a small fraction that have been talking about Khabib 
forever. Um, anybody that I can, I hate to keep going back to this point, but this is just my point when you talk about Khabib. Anybody that wrestles bears, <laughs> alligators, <laughs> or any other type of wildlife animal, <laughs> for the fun for for the fun of it, um, mindset got to be a little different than everybody else. I don't see, I mean, and I I like Tony Ferguson, you know, um, I love the hardcore shit. I, you know, I love that you know, he's a shit talker and he kicks ass and all that. He's got a nine fight win streak going on, but this is how I view the fight. You know, t- Tony trying to, you know, set him up for, you know, a right or a left, you know, throw some punches at him. Um, could be weathering that storm and laying his hands on him. Once Khabib grabs you, it's pretty much the end of your night until you figure out when you want to give up because that's going to be a long-ass ride. Once he gets you, um, you're not going to get up off the mat until you either – tap out or get knocked the fuck out. So one thing is you never have to worry. You know, you talk about Khabib. Khabib is going to be the next interim champion. Um, And by the way, I think this interim (laughs) championship shit is some bullshit because um, Connor just recently won this title. Daniel Cormier, who hasn't defended his title in over, you know, a year. Yeah. You know, um, no interim title there. Um, although there was with John Jones, but it just doesn't make sense that they're having an interim fight. It's not like Connor's injured. Um why not just have a, a one-off with Tony Ferguson and Khabib to see who's the actual number one contender? Because what this what this fight really is is a, it's an eliminator, and we're going to give you okay, who will win this fight? We're going to give this belt to. So you're you're the person that's going to fight Connor next. I think that's bullshit. I think Connor's going to take another fight before he fights the winner of that fight. And it's probably yeah. going to be a fight to where he can make the most money. Um, meaning he can talk all the shit in the world about not wanting to fight Nate Diaz. That's the biggest fight out there for him. Or, 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 or fight Nick. And Nick is not going to fight him because he feel like that's his brother's fight. Yeah. So, you know, Connor right now, I mean he's in he's in a good place, but UFC gonna do everything that they can and make sure that man had that belt for a little while longer because they have no stars. There are no stars left in UFC that they can promote like they can promote Connor. Ronda's pretty pretty much done. Um, even, even though I would like to see her, you know, continue and, you know, show show some of that spunk that you've been showing in the past, you know, thinking you're, you know, this, that, and the other. Um, but they don't have any stars, you know, so you need that star power. They're going to they're gonna re-sign Brock Lesnar, and they're going to re-sign him once his suspension is up. Oh, so he'll have definitely. another one or two fights there. If anybody think anything else, they don't know shit. Because oh, that's going to happen. They need a person that has star power to bring pay-per-view buys in. That's what the game is about right now, man. You know, um, is this a is this a, US, is this a perfect time for uh, someone like a GSP to come back and really have some leverage towards the uh, the UFC? Uh, I think so. Um, I would love, I'd like to see GSP back. I think GSP does numbers. GSP would do incredible numbers um, if they did shows over in Toronto. 
Um, I like GSP, but he's one of the good guys, man. So I, I would, I would like, I would like to see him, you know, back, back in the hockey game, doing what he do best, man. But I don't, um, I don't know. I think, I think Dana's not being um, genuine with the fans uh, when, when it's concerning um, GSP, because otherwise we would have seen him back in the cage already. Right. Oh, what do you think about this uh, lawsuit that Mark Hunt's uh, filing with the UFC and uh, Brock Lesnar? Do you think anything constructive will come out of it? Um, yeah. Um, Mark Hunt getting some money and selling out of court. But the bottom line is, UFC be no shit. They do. But... Their attitude is, okay, well, we'll get by this and we'll handle it later because they ultimately trying to make money. And doing that, you put Mark Hunt's career in jeopardy. Every time you put him in the cage with somebody that I've been, in, been on Roy's, anything can happen. You've done that several times with this man. Um, and it's documented. And... I believe him when he says that they be knowing about that shit. You know, I've seen, I've seen dudes, you know, we talk about fight promotions. I've seen dudes not, not make weight in front of people. And when everybody going all of a sudden, 15, 20 minutes later, that dude made weight, but we ain't got no witnesses to the fact. So, it's a lot of dirty shit to be going on in the fight world, man. It's just, uh, I'm not mad at Mark Hunt. Mark, Mark Hunt is, is looking for protection. You know, that's, you know, that's pissed him off. And he has every right to be mad about that, man. You know, one one wrong move and you can settle for less, man. So I hope Mark Hunt get his bread. Definitely. They also beat official the, the rematch between uh, Tyron Woodley and uh, Wonderboy Stephen Thompson for uh, UFC 209. Um, mm -hmm. Woodley said that they did also offer him Nick Diaz, but Nick Diaz wanted uh, too much money, so he turned down the fight. Um, uh, I don't know. You know, <laughs> if Nick Diaz did want money, then he is. I mean, think about it. Them two fight. He is the drawing power out of those two. So why wouldn't he ask? Like, belts don't really mean shit these days. They really don't. Everybody want to, like, everybody want to, you know, everybody want to fight each other now. You know, I'll take this fight or I'll take, take that fight. Even 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 looking at hip-hop, <laughs> everybody want to fight each other now. <laughs> I've been saying this shit, I've been saying this shit for about five, four or five years now that, if if you got a disagreement with anybody, you know, you should be able to get in cage and beat that dude's ass. And, you know, wherever it happens out in the cage, just stay in the cage, man. But I just wish people was really tough. I, I used to wish that people was really tough with their hands instead of their mouth. Now all of a sudden, everybody want to fight each other, man. <laughs> this is, it, it's, just, it's just turning real lame, you know, the... The amount of texts that I got about Soldier Boy and Chris Brown, I'm like, man, I don't, I don't want to hear about that shit, no, man. man. No, <laughs> I don't want to hear about that cornball ass shit, man. You know, because that's what it is. It's cornball ass shit. And, you know, the funny thing is people buy into that type of shit, but they won't buy into the real shit. Right. And it's because, it, it's, it's because of uh, um, the, the celebrity you know, that being these individuals. And I, I just think all this shit is corny. I was reading some shit today where Meek Mill said he'll fight Drake for five million. <laughs> dude, dude, go sit the fuck down, man. You can't even walk up or walk down those stairs without slipping. You know, like, <laughs> right. the, the, the dude's just taking L's left and right. You know, I, I just don't get it. You know, I, I've seen some of these dudes hit the punching bag. It's horrible. Horrible. <laughs> Leave that shit to the professionals. Sorry. Sorry. And Floyd, Floyd and 50 just making a mockery, mockery of everybody, and they just laugh. Like, 
you know, I, I seen some when Soldier Boy was talking in front of Floyd, and Floyd was just looking at him. And you could just really tell that he wanted to bust out laughing, but he kept a straight face. Right. I laughed. I'm like, I, I laughed because I'm like, this clown ass motherfucker. Look at this clown. Ain't throwing right to the wedding. And you want to fight? <laughs> Fuck out of here. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. Yeah, but uh, uh, I mean, I understand why Woodley was asking for money fights. Yeah. Um, it's 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 obvious that the UFC really don't want him as champion. They want somebody like Stephen Wonderboy Thompson as champion. I think I think it fits their marketing scheme a lot better. Um, I, 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 I just think Teron knows, so I wouldn't have been mad at him for getting one of them money fights. You know, hey, he's UFC champion. He deserves that shit. You know, I wouldn't have been mad at him fighting Michael Bisbee because I want Michael Bisbee to get the brakes beat off of him. <laughs> He he's one that talks too much, man. I'm like you, lucky dude. You you a dude that won a title, not luck as far as beating an opponent, but like you stepped in in two weeks. Like who? That that shouldn't have been wrote like that, you know. You you were you were called in to sub somebody else, and that's what happened. So it is what it is, man. But. Yeah, the game is getting watered down, man. It's getting it's getting watered down. I'm, you know, I still got love for it, man. But when corny people start thinking they know the fight game, it's almost it made me just not even want to say nothing, man. Because it's like you'll be wasting energy talking to a person who does not have a fucking clue about anything. Right. Yeah. I I read oh, some. What's that? I read what, something what's that like move right there. That's a guillotine. Go ahead. Yeah, I read the. I, someone made this. Uh, like someone that's a part of like the MMA media. I forget who. They they uh, had this tweet about, and I'm paraphrasing about how pretty much these days we love everything that goes on within the octagon, but everything outside of it we just hate now. Um. Yeah, yeah, because you see the politics and bullshit. Here it is, Ronda Rousey, and I hate to keep being a dead horse, but here it is, Ronda Rousey had one of the biggest fights of her career, and she has yet to say anything to the media. I ain't talking about no written statement or something that her press wrote for her. I'm talking about some shit like, hey, I got caught, I got fucked up, it happens. You know, she has yet to talk, which leads me to believe, like, like, champions don't do that, man. Dominic Cruz is a perfect example of what a champion is all about. Yeah. You win, you win graces, you lose graces. Fans will respect you more in a losing effort if if your humility is so on point and you giving it up. I don't think, I think Ronda, Ronda will always have people that will cheer for, but they cheer for, for different reasons. They cheer for because, you know, Like Rhonda has this perception, what well, she had a perception, and you have a lot of non-educated people that you know watch MMA and they really think they know what's going on with mixed martial arts, man. And it is bad, man. It's all bad, <laughs> all fucking bad. I still love the shit, but it's all bad. Right. This weekend, this Sunday, is uh, UFC Fight Night. Uh, it's uh, headlined by uh, BJ Penn versus Yara R- R- uh, Rodriguez. Uh, how do you think this is going to pan out? You know, What do you think uh, BJ Penn needs to do to win? What do you think Yara needs to do to win? All right. Well, first, before I even say that, um, I got a shameless plug this. Um, I'm... I'm I'm a huge BJ Penn fan, man. He's, you know, between him and Mandalay, those are the two that made me fall in love with the sport again, um, or the sports entertainment, as Mo would call it. <laughs> um, um, I'm a I'm a big BJ Penn a B, BJ Penn uh, fan. Um, I remember when I put Clash of the Titans out. His uh, 
his uh, verified Twitter used to always uh, post Clash of the Titans up, and, and he will always say, uh, this is the very first music video that ever incorporated mixed martial arts. He used to always say that when he when he would plug my my uh, my class and Titan video. Man. Dope, so dope. yeah, I, I I fuss with BJ man. Um, I'm curious to see how how BJ looked. I mean, the last time I seen BJ, he was kind of like he was you know like his knuckle game looked a little different. It was almost like he had that put him up, put him up, put him up. He had that you know like. Why are you saying it straight up, right? And especially that's not the BJ Penn that that we knew. So, you know, he he's you know working down there at Jackson 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 and Winkle John's camp um, with John Jones and and, and Alice Overeem and the rest of them. Um, I'm curious to see what what he looks like, man. Um, it, you know, when you talk about BJ, of course his boxing is important to set up everything else, whether it be his jiu-jitsu or, you know, whatever else he does when he's on the ground. But I like BJ hands. I think if BJ can get back to being the old BJ and throwing his hands confidently, then he'll knock my man out. Um, and what his opponent needs to do is you need to expose that rust. BJ ain't been in the, in, in the cage for a minute. You know, despite what people say, ring rust, cage rust does exist. So, you you know, you might see BJ. The game ain't about to slow down for you, but you might see BJ. You know, not as quick. You know, with his footing, or or he might telegraph his his, his punches. You know, they got to take advantage of that uh, of that. That uh, that cage bus, man. I think that'll play a factor, man. But more importantly, I just want to see an exciting fight, and I want to see. Uh, I don't want to see anybody get hurt because uh, BJ is my guy. I rock with him. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, excited to see uh, see uh, how BJ Penn uh, looks out there on Sunday. Uh, mm -hmm. Looks like he's in really good shape. You know, he looks pretty. Uh, he looks ready to go. That's the see hope that. You know, when he uh, hits the octagon, that uh, you know, he's mentally in there and ready to go. That's the key. When he gets to the octagon, is he is he going to be ready? Is he going to be ready? So that's what we need to know. We need to know, you know, what's going on with Brother BJ, man. And like I said, we'll know, we'll know within the first minute and a half. You know. Um, you know, will we see BJ use some of that BJJ that that he's so good at? Um, it's just BJ has so many things, you know, to his game, to where it's like, okay, well, I wonder how he's gonna do this, man. We we gonna see, we're gonna see. Rooting for my boy BJ, though. Salute to them, and salute to everybody over at BJPen.com. They've always been good to me. Word up, word up. I. Uh Turn into the the world of pro wrestling. Uh, right now, we're on the road to the Royal Rumble in the WWE on January 29th. And this this is the weird. Th this is something I was thinking about this past week. I'm like, I feel like there's way too much time from the last pay per view to this next to Royal Rumble to set this thing up. I feel like yeah, there's just way too much time in between all of this. And this the setup to the Royal Rumble is just taking forever. Mm-hmm. Like they they they're waiting on the right matches. Yeah, it it's I don't know. It it, it just like this past I mean, every week we kind of uh you know are really critical of Raw, but this past week I was like half hour in, I was like, man, we're only one sixth into this show. And then like and you was tired, wasn't you? Yeah, and then like seventy minutes into it, I was like, "Man, we're not even halfway through this show, man." <laughs> you know the only reason I wa hey, look. You know the only reason I look at at Raw now. The only reason I look at Raw is for Chris Jericho, man. <laughs> hey, <laughs> oh my God! And he won the belt. 
He won the U.S. Hey, congratulations, congratulations to him for winning the one title that has eluded him his entire career, and that is the United States Championship. Um, good for him. You know, I, I rocks with the OGs. And Chris Jericho is definitely an OG. And to be able to – he's been able to make himself over, still be the same guy, but come up with new shit, man. And it's the reason why Chris Jericho is in a lot of segments on Raw. It, 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 he's just that fucking good. And it proves that – not only you gotta have great wrestling skills, but you gotta have you gotta be able to have a mouthpiece, man. And this either you have it or you don't have it. Um, to hear him every week, because you know when the setup is coming, you see it coming, and the fans get all happy and giddy because they want to be a part of. <laughs> you know what happens? You, you you know what what happens when somebody cuts me off when I'm giving a speech? <laughs> Do you know what happens? And then, and then all of a sudden, it's a it's a pause. You wait, you wait. Then he pulls the he pulls the pen out, and you see him put the pen in, and you wait. And then he and then he just says it. You just made the list. Oh my god, it is, dude, dude. Oh my god, let me, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me see here. Let me see here. I said, if you ever in my presence, you can play at a risk. I Jericho, you little rookies, like you made the list. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is a great line. It is a great line. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I enjoy uh, using that reference yesterday. I really enjoy using it. Yeah, man, but Chris Jericho was single-handedly the reason why I watched Raw. Um, to continue to keep doing what he's been doing, you know, for the past 20 years, that dude is reinventing himself, man. I just enjoy watching his segments, and I enjoy watching his matches, man, because I'm telling you, you know, when he – that look – I think you remember, like I remember, when he first started doing that. Yeah. And as the as the week as the weeks went on and on and on, it's taking on a life of itself, man. I I was looking at, um, you know, when they had the uh, in the Survival Series when they had SmackDown versus Raw when they were all in the cage. I mean, when they were all in the ring. And Roman Reigns was right on the side of Chris Jericho. And Chris Jericho was talking cash shit to AJ Styles. And, uh, you know, Chris's insults, man, you can just really tell they'd be off the top. You know, so to see some of these guys, to see some of these guys break character, um, it just like Roman Reigns can't hold his humor in for nothing. He's going to laugh, right? You know, um, I, I think the part where James Ellworth was uh, he was behind Dean Ambrose on outside of the apron. He was like, "Who's oh, this funny looking guy?" You can just look at Roman Reigns' face and you see that he's laughing, laughing. Now he's a good guy technically, and he's supposed to be laughing at that shit, <laughs> right? Um, to to. Like Jericho's setups just be fucking great, man. And when he's not on, when he ain't on Raw, you know, like without Raw, without him being on Raw right now, I don't even think I could watch the program. I love SmackDown. SmackDown is just fucking a one. Oh yeah, it was weird this week because okay, in general, you know, you know, you have to suspend reality a little bit in regards to what goes on with wrestling, and there is a lot of things that are absurd. But this past Monday, they had this whole storyline of Mick Foley's, uh, uh, whatever, uh, performance review, and it was all hinging on if The Undertaker actually showed up. And none of Which that makes corny. sense. It was so corny, and it makes no sense. How are you going to, like, okay, how are you going to, like... Get SmackDown wrestler. <laughs> It's 
it's like, yeah. And but how are you gonna like run commercials that the Undertaker might be there and announce this stuff, and then have this whole like storyline about with Mick Foley looking for the Undertaker? It makes it makes no sense. And then at the same point, you're like, who cares? Also, There's... yeah, yeah, and that's exactly how I. I, I just was like, wow, man, Stephanie is really reaching. Um, maybe a Stephanie McMahon, man. I've never been a Stephanie McMahon person, but I I, I really hate how she kind of runs raw, man. It ain't, you know, you can really, really tell that Shane is the brains behind a lot of that stuff, man. I don't, I, I, I think Shane is doing a tremendous job, man, with storylines and everything else, you know, that goes on with the SmackDown brand. But Raw, something, you know, something just not right with it, man. It's not right at all. Um, whether it be Mick, um, Mick Foley, whether it be Triple H, um, I'm assuming he's getting ready for his big return, but and nobody really cares. Um yeah, it's the raw ain't what it was. It's not what it was, man. I I I, I watched it literally for Chris Jericho. I still I'm still not liking. Um, I'm just I'm not liking a lot of things, man. I want to see some more Joe on one of these two brands. I want to see like certain things that we as fans want to see. And until they end, and, and now I do, there's one thing that has happened the last couple of weeks that I'm, that I'm happy about. I'm glad that Dolph Ziggler finally turned bad. Right. But, but even with that, when I look at him, I still see Shawn Michaels. <laughs> he's Shawn Michaels. He's Shawn Michaels 2.0. That's when I look at him, I just see Shawn Michaels. You know, when I see him do his move, I, I see Shawn Michaels. I don't want to think like that, but that's just who I see. I see Shawn Michaels. Yeah, he 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 could be he could use for some sort of a uh, like a makeover in regards to big makeover. Like like not just you know the turn and heel like everything you know. He needs something to differentiate himself again, you know, because. You know, I I've definitely liked that. You know, this aggressive side, this heel turn, it's been pretty, it's been pretty dope. But still needs something to you know get away from that. Yeah, that Shawn Michaels thing, that thing that that's always been tied to his look. You know what I'm saying? Pull up, pull up. Mhm. Totally agree with that, man. I, I, I for me, is is. Like wow, dude! Are you ever gonna take those tight tights off? Are you ever gonna get some new boots that don't resemble Shawn Michaels' boots? Hey, how about wearing some jeans in the rain? <laughs> nope, nope. Shawn Michaels did that too. Okay, how about putting some tights on and you switching your whole, you know? Can you do that? No, they're not, not gonna do that neither. Right. They, they, they ain't gonna do that either. They. They go keep him looking like Shawn Michaels with dark hair, and the hair looks greasy, like he getting in the shower. <laughs> so, I, you know, I want to see Roman needs to turn bad. Roman needs to turn bad, but they're not gonna do that. That's Vince's guy, and Vince's not gonna do that. So, right. Hold on. And it's pull up, Detroit. What? Yeah, what? and it's it's like uh, I, it's like almost like they're scared to turn all these guys like like hundred percent heel, but I think like with someone like uh, for example Neville, who's recently did a complete heel turn, and it's been successful and people are liking it. I think that's a little a little example of these things that can actually work. Yeah, yeah, but. What you don't wish for is them waiting too long for them to pull the plug on something. Oh, they always if do. If you're going to do stuff, and you, if you're going to do that type stuff, do it when, like, you got to, it's like you got to flick the switch at the right moment when you when you switching the character up. And when they don't do it, it takes away from any good that they was trying to do. So, you know, we we will see. 
we go see what's going on. We definitely go see what's going on um, in the next couple of weeks, man. I really don't know how I feel about this European championship, this UK heavyweight championship that they about to put on. I I don't know how I feel about that. I, I it's just some about it's some about that not being like it's some about that not it just it it don't feel right. You know, um, I don't even know the European title. You know, back in the day that D'Lo Brown held and every you know Chris Jericho and a lot. You know, the European title back in the day was, you know, excuse the French, you know, that was a bullshit title. <laughs> right. So are, are are we really going to accept that? You know what I would think will be real dope, and I'm really surprised that WWE hasn't even been on this page. Why is it that you have not created a world television champion? Right. T- TV champions are super fucking dope. Um, the one thing that the TV champion provides is when he's on television, he's defending the title. Imagine seeing a dude. I used to really love seeing Tully Blanchard or Ole Anderson or Arn Anderson or any of the Dusty Rhodes or any of the Nikita Koloff, any of these people defending their TV title every fucking week on WTVS because that's what it was, the TV title. You could put that strap on somebody that deserves it and see phenomenal matches every week. And and you can you can make that title more it, it, to me, that would be more than making a UK champion. Like it just that shit just sounds corny. So I, I, you know, again, if it wasn't for my boy, you just made the list. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be looking at Raw at all. I'd just be happy looking at AJ Styles or No Homo, but <laughs> uh, watching a- AJ Styles, um, you know, on SmackDown every Tuesday. No, my take with the the this UK tournament that they're doing, if they just did like they just did, they just gathered all these uh, these British wrestlers and had this tournament, and it was something that uh, WWE sanctioned, and they just did this tournament, that would be cool. But my problem is mm-hmm. like is like what they did with the cruiserweights, they try to infuse them into the product afterwards, and it wasn't as cool as the tournament. Um, so, exactly. I would just be fine if they just did the tournament and left it there. Maybe did it every year and collected a new set of guys each year and just had the tournament of that every year, you know. Oh. Okay. But but I'm scared that they're going to try to infuse a few of these British guys into the product afterwards. I mean, some of them, you know, you might see somebody that might like um that might be uh good for the actual main roster product. But what they're going to do mm-hmm. is they're going to infuse him as being a part of this thing that he was a part of, um, this tournament, instead of, um, you know, having him be this person out on his own, you know, like they're doing this mm-hmm. little cruiserweight thing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I, I totally feel you on that, man. It's just, um, yeah, I just think they're throwing too much. Like, because you got to go through the realm of introducing characters again, and then we got to figure out if we like them as wrestlers. I just think it, it, it's too much. It's too fucking much right now. So, you know, uh, like I've been saying, let us see what's going to happen. Um, let's see what's going to happen these next couple of weeks. Pretty sure this shit going to be corny. But... You know, we just got to sit and wait and see what's going to happen here, man. Because, um, you know, there, there's one thing for sure that we're going to see. We're going to see Chris Jericho on three, four segments um, on Raw. And I'm okay with that. As long as you give me more Jericho. Um, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I, it's, it's something about... It, it, it's something about... Uh, the raw brand that just turns me the hell off, man. Might be Stephanie McMahon uh, running it. I don't know. You know, uh, 
it, it's something about that brand that it don't sit well uh, for me at all. Right. Mm-hmm. Sad, but sad, but true. To kind of close things off this week, uh, recently, this past week or so, there's been uh, a lot of r- rumors uh, circling around about uh, what the future holds for uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling's uh, Kenny Omega. Um, he lost his uh, match to Okada, one of the best matches ever. It was an incredible match at uh, Wrestle Kingdom 11. Um, but then mm-hmm. afterwards, he, um, he said that he wants to... Uh, you know, take some time off, reassess everything. Um, even with um, in, at New Japan at their uh, upcoming New Beginning uh, um, events uh, in February, no one from the Bullet Club is even uh, booked for any of those events. Um, so, with all of that, the rumors are circulating about uh, about Kenny Omega coming to the WWE. Um, Apparently, there's been uh, Triple H has voices uh, interest in Kenny Omega, and uh, and even John Cena trolled the whole thing by posting a picture of Kenny Omega on his Instagram account. Uh, my thing is, he did that last year too. Yeah, for he did that last year too with AJ Styles. Right, and while it would be great for Kenny Omega to, you know come to the WWE if he can be in that same sort of role or level of respect that AJ Styles has. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, he, go give it to him. I'm not sure he's re- like, I'm not sure that it's his time yet for WWE. He still, I th- he still needs to win that um, IWGP heavyweight um, title in Japan to solidify mm-hmm. his Japanese career. Because I think he's going to go down as one of the greatest of all time in Japan wrestling. And that's, mm-hmm. that's, the, one, that's the one major belt that has eluded him. And, and, and like I've said many times, if he's going to come to the WWE, whether it's six months from now, a year, two years, three years from now, it needs to be at that point where he's totally solidified himself in a similar way that AJ Styles did to where he can own his name, own his persona, own his merch, own everything, and have... That's what it's about. Have a bit of a say. Yep. Yep. You want to have some say. And I think, you know, whatever decision he makes, you know, it's going to be, you know, the best for him, man. But I think he should stay that indie role. Why not? Because he's getting more. Um, You got all these... Uh, promotions that's going to work around your schedule. Um, and in the indie circuit, you'll have more time to do what you want to do within life. You know, and, instead of dealing with a hectic WWE schedule. Right. And basically, um, um, I think he should. Yeah. Basically, all Kenny's been doing is um, New Japan Pro Wrestling, but then he might do some um, ROH because of their. Uh, um, affiliation that they have affiliation so yeah so like they um he doesn't even really do the indie circuit anymore he just basically um is able to stick to doing um uh new japan pro wrestling and uh, roh and it's possible that he might just have an exclusive deal with uh um new japan pro wrestling and uh Mm -hmm. and with them they do their little tours and everything but yeah it's still not the um um the, the extensive schedule that uh, the WWE uh, um, has. So, like, you know, basically, if you were to come to WWE, it would have to be for, you know, for what his best interests are, you know, and hopefully that means that he's, he'll able to be able to keep his own shit and have control over his own thing. And I know he might want to come back to uh, this part of the world for, I'm not sure, you know, what his family situation, because he is from Canada and whatnot. Um, but that might play, mm-hmm. f- play a factor as it did with like AJ Styles and, um, you know, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, they, you know, they, they liked coming here because they'll be close to their family again and they'll have to do these like two or three week treks to, you know, uh, to, to Japan. But at the same time, he had, mm-hmm. he's had, he's had a solidified career over in Japan. Um, so, um, I, th- I think he's like one of the few, you know, uh, pro wrestlers that if it's his time to come to WWE, it has to be under, you know, his terms, you know, it has to be a good deal. Mm-hmm. 
I totally agree. It has to make sense for him to make that move. And if he has more perks, you know, like it's similar to fighters in the U fighters that want to go to the UFC. You know, they got two, three, four victories, and they just want to be in the UFC just for the sake of wanting to be in the UFC. But you go to the UFC, and you only get five grand a fight. <laughs> Don't lowball yourself for the for the numbers, especially when you were, when you were the ticket of the indie show. You know, you got more bread coming to you, man. So, I, somebody like Kenny Omega, if I was him, unless the something he couldn't walk away from, why not? Why not just do him and enjoy the fruits? And I say who I, who I am didn't sign a contract with him because I I thought he may, may have hit his window um, or, or or ceiling was Jay Leaf who made that move because he's done everything. Right. You know, so, um, you know, independent, the end, I'm excited about the independent scene again because it's just reminding me of how it used to be. And in order for you to have, you know, a, a great company, that competition. Without competition, it becomes stagnant and the same thing every week. And that's for anything that you do. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I'm I'm excited to see uh, who kind of uh, comes up on the indies this year. Uh, there's definitely, a, you know, a few people that I keep my eye on at all times. But, uh, so, you know, there's always mm-hmm. somebody who uh, kind of elevates each year. So I'm excited to see what happens. Um, all right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's about it for this week's uh, episode of uh, Fresh of the Word. Uh, B Styles, tell them where they can uh, find you online. You can find your man Twitter forward V Styles. That'd be forward slash V S T Y L E Z. Same thing with my regular Facebook page V S T Y L E Z. I have a artist page, a verified artist page uh, with forward slash official V styles. So spell out official. And then put V-Styles after the official, V-S-T-Y-L-E-Z. And you can hit me on Instagram with the forward slash V-Styles. Instagram.com forward slash V-S-T-Y-L-E-Z. Um, leave me a comment. You know, smart asses will get dealt with accordingly. <laughs> and uh, stay up, my people. I, I look to hear it from you. Awesome. Great. Thanks for listening. And I, I, I want you to have a great trip next week, man. And enjoy California. Oh, definitely. And and tell Mo that all day walkers are not soft. He got this thing that the way he think light skin dudes are soft. I'll be like, nah, dog. I mean, <laughs> nah. <laughs> so you tell tell him you tell him you are my honorary day walker, and day walkers deserve respect. Honorary day walker. All right, I'll tell him that, man. All right. All right, thanks for listening. Uh, see you next week. Fresh, 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 fresh is the word.